Wednesday the 29th of March 2017 and today is the day we hand our divorce papers to the EU. Today's the day we trigger Article 50. I'm not going to get into the, all the politics of this, not just because I'm a charity leader and we're supposed to stay away from party politics or stick to our knitting as one government minister once said, but the whole thing about hard and soft Brexit, Brexit is a technical process. It's purely the decision of undoing a treaty that we have. We're not actually going to separate ourselves from Europe physically because we can't. We're already an island. We can't move the island further away. One of the things that we need to recognise is that not everywhere feels the same about this. There are communities across the country that voted in very, very different ways and for different reasons, and not always for the reasons you might expect. So I'm standing in the centre of Manchester. But if I look out the window over there, I can see Oldham. Manchester voted remain, Oldham voted to leave. The whole of Greater Manchester, the northern parts of Greater Manchester voted to leave, the southern parts voted remain. Why is that? Is that to do with wealth? Is that to do with success? Is that to do with perceptions of the economy? The point is, we need to talk about those things because if we just ignore them, we will never move on. What we need to do is make sure that our voices are heard in the conversation, not just as Brexit evolves, but as we reshape British law, because all the things that are currently bound up with European legislation are going to be rewritten. Some of them may stay the same, some of them may change drastically. We don't know, but we still have to remember that we can be part of shaping the future of British legislation as well, not just changing our relationship with Europe. I think what we've got to do as charities in thinking about the future is remember who we are. Because whatever happens in the future, we're here for a purpose. So we've got to remember that we're here to support the people in our communities, in our country and abroad, and be part of an international movement of people who are basically trying to make the world a better place. And I know that sounds very do-goody and stuff, but hey, I work in the voluntary sector, why do you think I signed up for this gig? We've got to think about what we can bring to the party. But in order to do that, I think we've got to be part of the conversation, and we're not at the moment. There was a report published uh, in the last few days by the House of Lords, had some great stuff about charities in, but what's going to happen with that? In Greater Manchester, where I am, uh, we have the Local Economic Partnership. There's nobody from the voluntary sector on that, but they're the ones that manage all the European Union funding that we currently get. And I think one of the most important conversations for us as a sector is what happens with that money? Are we just going to stop doing all the things that the EU funded? Or are we actually going to find new ways to make those things happen? What are we going to ask for? I've got a bit of a call for a few people in this. I'm going to call on funders to help the charity sector think through what it can do about the future. What it can do to make sure that everybody benefits from the opportunities that will come out of Brexit, whether we planned for them or not, opportunities will be there, they always are. It's about finding them and making sure that they benefit everybody. I've got a call for the government to remember the voices of people in local communities who voted, often voted for Brexit because they felt left out. How are we going to keep them included? How are we going to make all those voices heard? In Greater Manchester, we're soon going to have a new mayor, and whoever he or she turns out to be will be a new voice for the city region. How's that voice going to influence Brexit nationally? I think we've got a conversation to have with ourselves as a charity sector, and by that I mean voluntary groups, community organisations, social enterprises, everybody. And we've got to think about how we can speak more loudly. I think it's noticeable during the referendum campaign that the guidance that came out kind of smothered the voice of the charity sector. I think we've got to do a lot more. This is not a political campaign anymore. We have a right to speak and we should do because that's how we shape the future. And we can do that by culture, by conversation, by debate, by encouraging everybody to feel like they have a right to be part of this. Maybe that's the most important thing we can do because that's about the productivity of the country. And I don't just mean productivity in the economic sense. I mean productivity in terms of us all feeling like we are part of something. We saw last year that the impact of the Brexit debate has kind of left people feeling split. We heard about families that were having huge arguments over it. 
We've got to move past that. We've got to find ways to say we can work together to make this a success, whatever it is, whatever it turns out to be. The last thing I'd say is that in a digital world that we now live in, many people are growing up never having known it any other way. They expect that you are connected to everybody everywhere in the world all the time. And I think we've got to remember that as a huge, huge opportunity for the future. Most of us in the charity sector struggle to get our heads around all the digital stuff because it's usually one of those things we can't really afford to do properly. I think that's got to change. I think that's part of the global conversation, and I do mean global. I mean actually forming those relationships with people in communities all around the world because actually the future of Britain is as a citizen of the earth. Whether we're part of a European structure or not, we are part of the world. So we have to, even in the smallest community group in Manchester, we have to think about how we build the future that we want to see.